Morning world and welcome to Sunday 9th of January. Second little run around this morning just to make sure everything's ready for a go. Boys and girls, right, well, yeah, I think you've got enough. You're all happy enough in there. That's one box ticked. Morning, lads, lasses, boys and girls. You're all so okay in there, although bed's looking a bit grubby this morning. That's a job for when I get back. But the calves are still clean and dry. Not that that's an excuse for having a grubby bed for mum, but you know, they will have to wait until I get back. And have you got enough out here? Basically, I'm off to see my wife up in Oxford and I'm gonna be gone for about four and a half hours. Yeah. I think we're okay. I think we're good to go. So if they should happen to run out and I was half an hour later, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So if I put a, a fresh bale in either of these two feeders now, they'd be so full, by the time I got home, they'd be half gone, and most of that half would be on the floor. So it is, it's a twitchy moment, because I'm off on a trip, and if something should happen, there you go. Anyway, luckily for me, should something go wrong, as long as I can get hold of a phone, I'm sure one of my guys would come in and give the cattle a bail. I've got a neighbour that would come in and give the cattle a bail, and I'm also pretty sure Abby and Henry could come and do it. So it's not a massive risk. Right, that's defrosting. I'll get changed, and I'll get going. Right. Must be windows all clean. Um, so I'm hoping sometime in the next few weeks that um, I'll take the camera with me. I mean, you're going to come with me now on a little bit of the trip up to Oxford. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to actually take the camera with me, not to the not to the hospital where Judy is, because that would be un unfair on other patients, but. Um, we're now in the position where um, she hasn't got to stay in hospital. She can um, come out, we can go to have a wander in the shops, we can go to a cafe, uh, we can go to parks, we can go to places of interest, stuff like that. Um, and she spoke to me last night, and apparently Oxford's got one of the oldest arboretums in the country, botanical gardens and that. And I said to her, I said, oh, maybe in a week or two we'll go that and we'll take the camera. And she said, okay. She said, uh, that's fine. She said, I'll hold the camera. <laughs> so, um, you'll, you will see her again, I promise. But it'll be when she's ready. Uh, not before. Um, she still looks quite poorly. And she's very conscious of that. And she, she would rather you wait until she's feeling um, a bit better. So, uh, there's, there's not much wrong with her sense of humour. Uh, that hasn't that hasn't really altered at all it's still just as warped and twisted as mine but uh, yeah so um, sometime in the next few weeks um, I'll take you with me on a trip to Oxford and then we're going to have a wander around um, bits of Oxford okay that's where she is that's where I'm going so I'll, I'll take you with me all right okay So I was out early walking the dog. There's always a few early dog walkers up here. So this little bit of lane from home, this is, we call this Old London Road. This is part of the old salt track. 
uh, centuries ago that uh, traders used for a while. Um, transport and salt, I presume from uh, Sharpness docks or the Barclay area um, across towards sort of the east of the country. So, but I'm assuming this road would have originally gone all the way to London, hence the name Old London Road. So, who would have thunk it? All the way over here in Wooden Under Edge, like 120 miles away. Welcome to Kingscut. This is literally just a few miles away from home. And that's more or less it. Apart from the village that you can't see, which is over to your left hand side. Um, you might be able to see one roof of this, not really very not much light, but yeah. There's the village, there's a house in the village, there's a big house behind, pub on the right hand side. We quite often come up here for um, Sunday lunch, so Hunter's Hall, not a bad place to visit if you want Sunday lunch. And that was it. Kingscut is done. So next stop is Tetbury. Just as soon as we've got across the A46. So, which sometimes is a few seconds and sometimes is a few minutes. Oh, look at that. God loves me today. Another nice place to come up for a meal if you're in the area. So, Carlcut um, Spa, or so Carlcut Manor. So, um, yes, very popular with the country gentry folk. So. This is a nice little place we're going through just before Tetbury. So, Beverston. So, little village actually has its own castle in here. And part of the castle is still lived in. Um, one of our tree company clients actually. So we've got a bit of work to do up here, hopefully in the next month or two, when the, um, when the garden's dry enough for us to drive across it. And finally, Tetbury. So although a lot of you will know this, some of you won't, um, this is the, um, or has been the local town to our king for the last 20 or 30 years. King Charles, as we know him now, or uh, uh, Prince of Wales Charles, his home is just on the outskirts of Tetbury, not on this road. We won't be going past his, his house, but um, I would imagine he will still be spending quite a bit of time in and around Tetbury because, well, it's his home. So, other than that, Tetbury is a historic town, and although I've mentioned it in videos before, um, it is worth a visit. There's a couple of nice places to stay here, uh, a, a few very nice places to eat here. Um, King Charles actually has a shop here, so if you want to come shopping and buy some <coughs> royal goods, you can. If you turn right at these lights, there's a blue-fronted shop oh, a few hundred meters up there called Highgrove, and you can buy yourself stuff stuff so there you go so there are, well that's Tetbury or half of it there's the Priory Inn nice place to go for lunch and I think well the only thing we got left now is Tesco's really so um, yeah I'll shut up and you can enjoy what's left of the village the new self-service fuel station that they put in there. So you can literally go in there 24 hours a day, any day of the year, as long as you've got a credit card and some credit, you can buy fuel. The other thing, of course, is if you like Audi cars, you could always come to Tetbury to go around the Audi showroom, which is directly in front of us now, Tetbury Audi. There you go. You can go in here and buy a car and lose all your driving skills. 
well, road manners anyway. That's it, Tepper is done. On to Sirencester. How about visiting a pub in the middle of nowhere between Tepper and Sirencester? There you go. You could go there. Trouble House. Don't know why it's called Trouble House, plus that's where the Sirencester boys and the Tepper boys used to meet up for a fight on a, on a Saturday night. You know, that makes sense to me. Okay, I'm only going to say this because you can't really see it, but over on my right hand side, there is uh, one, two, three, three jumbo jets, um, another ancient old plane that I can't remember the name of, but it's got uh, four turbo turboprop engines, and then one, two, three more jumbo jets, and I know further over to the right, where we can't see from here even, is a rank more of jumbo jets. We are passing Kemble Airfield. So if you go back and watch uh, the Flying Farmer uh, videos in the playlist, that's where I went up in Microlight a couple of times. Um, in fact, I've done three or four light aircraft and Microlight flights up there. Only a few of them got videos because some of them were pre Farmer P videos. But um, yeah, turn right here. And if you want, there's a cafe right next to the um, control tower and you can sit in the cafe and drink coffee it's called AV8 by the way the cafe you can sit in there drink coffee eat bacon butties or whatever you fancy and watch the planes and helicopters come in and out and land it's actually quite a nice place just to go and visit so and if you fancy a flying lesson a micro light or light aircraft helicopter or anything you can do it there that's the place to go Right, so, next stop. Can you tell this is a bit of old Roman road, by the way? <coughs> Romans were quite busy around here, and a lot of our roads are quite straight. They may not all be very level, because of the Cotswold Hills, but we've got a lot of straight roads. So, go on, run. And this, the pub on the left-hand side here is called the Thames Head. I'm telling you, just in case you can't see it. So, I think I've only ever been in there once for something because it's too far away from home but uh, this bridge here we call it the rabbit hole so this is the main route between Tepri and Sirencester it's got a 13 foot headspace so ever so many vehicles have got jammed underneath there and now ladies and gentlemen we are about to cross the River Thames yes just to my left you can see might be able to see a puddle of water right there that's usually dry in the summer but a few hundred meters up there is the source of our River Thames, the one that empties out into the sea through London. So, you know, a lot of connectivity between here and London. Anyway, uh, onwards to Sirencester, uh, through the crossroads here. On my left hand side is a place called Coates, um, one of the colleges I used to train at. I did a lot of my chainsaw training over there actually in my young days when I was young, fit and climbing trees. Not anymore. So, yeah, anyway, I'll shut up. On to Tetbury. Did I say Tetbury? On to Sirencester, even. It's early, all right? I've not been in that bed that long. Okay, on our left-hand side, it's a bit, of, uh, a bit of the world that young Tom Pemberton will recognise. This is uh, the Royal University, sorry, Royal Agricultural University, RCU. It used to be the Royal College of um, Agriculture, but now it's the university. So I do believe this is where young Tom Pemberton spent some of his youth learning all the intricacies of being a farmer. Remember this, Tom? I could turn left here and go back to Stroud, but we're not going. Um, we're not going west. We're going north. Okay, Sirencester, um, a Roman town, if you will. 
So if you ever want to visit Siren Sester, or if you're interested in Roman history in the UK, then there's the Crinium Museum, and all around this area, there is historic Roman stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of tourism around here, a lot of Americans, a lot of um, Orientals, a lot of, well, a lot of everybody. So, but maybe not as concentrated as one of the villages we're about to go to shortly. So, soon we'll be going through Bybury. This time of day, it's going to be fairly empty. But I reckon on the way back, we'll have to push our way through the queues of tourists that seem to flood Bybury. So, maybe I'll get to show it to you while it's empty and you can see some of the village. Anybody still here? You know? Am I talking to myself, or is there actually somebody still watching? So, we are... It's 8.45, so we are about half an hour into our journey. So, and we have done... How far have we gone? We've done 21 miles. That's not bad going. 21 miles in 30 minutes. So, that's one of the benefits of travelling on a Sunday morning. The roads are clear. So... Give it an hour of mind and it'll be full of Sunday drivers and then it'll take me twice as long. Yeah. Best to get up early. Right, I do not want to be stuck behind you. That's alright, we're turning right anyway, so I'm in the right lane. This is the time of day as well when uh, roundabouts really come into their own. I know over in the States you guys don't really have roundabouts. You have traffic lights everywhere. But um, yeah, when the roads are quiet, it just means the flow of traffic keeps going. There you go. There's the Tetbury BP um, fuel station, which as far as I'm aware, it's one of the most expensive <laughs> in the county. So. In comparison to where we are usually, that is usually the, the dearest fuel around here, so, yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, we're picking up some traffic, so... My progress may be slowed. No, nope, we don't want to go Gloucester. We do want to go to Burford. Yeah, go on, turn right. Turn right, do it. Oh well, it's got rid of one. So I could, here, I could go left or straight on. I want to go straight on. And unfortunately, so does mush in front. So I'm going to turn the camera off so there's no witnesses of me overtaking him in a minute. Okay? Okay. Welcome to Barnsley. No, not the big Barnsley. This is the little village of Barnsley. So, blink and you miss it. But, um, yeah. There you go. Barnsley House of Spa. If you fancy somewhere posh to go for, you know, spend some time. It's all part of the Cotswolds. Pretty little village, isn't it? And there you go. I think we're done. Bye, Barnsley. Yeah, we'll avoid that one. Better to go around it than through it. Okay, here we are. Outskirts of Bybury. And as they asked me so nicely to slow down, I will. A bit. So this is one of those uh, little Cotswold villages. It's got a water course running through the middle of it. It's got some very quaint, quintessential English 
well, that's just what it is. It's a quaint, quintessential English village um, with a nice place to eat. Um, I don't know if the trout farm's still open, but it used to be able to come down here when we were kids, uh, or when our children were kids, sorry, we used to bring them down here. You could go to the trout farm and literally go fishing and catch your own trout and then take it home for tea. Um, that was always something really interesting and nice to do, so anyway, uh, we'll wait for you, mate. You're coming uphill. Here we go. So come back here in a few hours and this road will be absolutely heaving, hence the double yellow lines everywhere, with cars. So Boybury gift shop on the left hand side, the Swan in front of us, the trout farm is over to our left. Um, yeah, we're going through, you won't really see anything, but um, normally where there's white cars parked on the right side, all of this down here is just heaving with cars all the way down here. So, yeah, it is a lovely bit of world, completely ruined by too many tourists. So, I won't come here anymore. Well, maybe this time of day, but no, it's ruined it for me, I'm afraid. Okay, so up the hill, past the security guard. Not sure what he's guarding, but he's always parked in here. So, and if it's not security guard, there's a copper parked in there. I know. Perhaps there's a VIP in there, I don't know. Okay, on to Burford. So this is the B4425 road, in case you wondered. In case you're following me on the maps. You could do that. You could go on Google Earth and then just know, follow me on maps where I'm going. So, yeah, Burford's next stop. Right, keep your... Um, Keep your eyes peeled. You might just spot Harry. So, do any of you follow um, Harry's farm or um, Harry's garage? So, this is um, Harry Metcalf's bit of territory up round here. Um, and I would imagine if he's filming something for Harry's garage, um, or even maybe the farm, I don't know, this would be the time of day you're likely to catch him, especially out on the road, because it's quiet. And if you're going to test something fast and throaty, I can't think of a better day or a better time than Sunday morning. So I don't think he's going to be doing much on the farm today, unless it's maintenance. But yeah, this is uh, Harry Metcalf territory. Morning, Harry. Oh yeah, if you haven't uh, subscribed to Harry, Harry's farm, go find it. You'll find it very informative, um, very straight to the point. Uh, different style to me but I really like what Harry does so I'm a, I'm a big fan of Harry Metcalf go find him and if you like your cars go find Harry's garage so yeah he does some interesting stuff I'm I'm not I'm not envious at all well maybe a bit so good on you Harry Okay, we are going to turn right onto the A40, which if you can read the sign, says Oxford and Burford. We're actually making pretty good time. So, the sun in my eyes might slow me down a bit. So, but yeah, more Roman roads. Okay, folks, welcome to Burford. So, another Cotswold town. Uh, not somewhere I spent a lot of time, so I can't really tell you much about it, but I'm pretty sure it's much the same as many other Cotswold towns, as in, it's picturesque, and parts of it will be quaint. Parts of it won't be. So, I can think it kind of depends on which part you're visiting. Anyway, so yeah, this is Burford, and any minute now we'll be out of it again. Garden centre on the right hand side, do you want to go and buy your potted plant? Some of it for the mother in law? Or not? 
Here you go. Oxford, 20 miles. And it is five minutes past nine. I think I'm going to be early. So I'm not supposed to be done at 10 o'clock. I have made pretty good time, mate. So, okay. Don't think I'm going to do it in an hour, though. It's usually about an hour, 15, an hour and a half to get from home to the hospital. Okay, down on my left-hand side, and there's a valley, and it's pretty flooded. Yeah. They've had some rain too. Right, we are staying on the A40, so we're gonna take the second exit, and so slow coach, typical. I was kind of hoping you were gonna turn left, mate. Pick a lane. Okay. Bye-bye. Yep, definitely not going to get stuck behind you either. To me, it looks like a lorry load of fun. I don't know if you can see that. That looks like someone's been or going banger racing. <laughs> I think by the state of those cars, been. <laughs> well, it's quarter past nine, and I think the visible signs of us getting nearer to um, habitation are rearing their ugly head of traffic. So, I'm not sure what we're following. That's too fast for um, bikes and tractors. Well, unless it's a fast track. So I presume we've got a slow moving HGV or similar in front of us. So we are doing 49 miles an hour in a 60. Not the end of the world still. So I've only got uh, like 10 miles to go, 11 miles to go, and I got 45 minutes to do it in. So, yeah, no, no big deal. Oh no, it's a car. It's a Sunday driver out early. So, it's probably Granddad and Granny taking Granny out for a trip for you know Sunday. Oh well, bless. We're all going to be Granddads one day. I'm just going to be a maniac granddad. Oh, fuel's not cheap here either. £1.77 a litre for diesel. So, does that mean the trend's going back up again? I do hope not. i got a funny feeling the fuel companies are uh, making a tidy profit at the moment. You know, swines. Oh well, we're still following Granny up front. I've got uh, an Asian gentleman in a white Tesla behind me that seems to think that if he pokes me right up the arse really close, I mean, he's literally right off my bumper, that maybe I'll go faster and I can make the car in front go faster and he can make the car in front go faster. Um, I could stop and tell him that he's mistaken, but um, uh, there's no point. No point at all, so. I'm trying to see what the car is up front. It's a little tiny thing. A little Corsa or something. Uh, maybe it's a learner. I can't see L plates. But nobody seems very keen to overtake them. Um, well. Oh well. Such is. There you go. There's the boundary sign for Oxford. So. We're in, the, we're in the county, not far from the town.
Okay folks, welcome to the city of Oxford. Apparently this is a cycling city. That's fantastic, because it's miles away from me and they can all stay up here. Brilliant. Spot the um, cell tower on the left hand side, looks like a conifer tree. Yeah it is, it's definitely a cell tower. Right then, now we've got to negotiate the urbanites. I'm better at it now than I was the first few visits up here. So the first few visits were kind of taken up with learning where I am and how to get where I want to go. So, but once you've done it a couple of times, and I don't need to sat nav or anything now, I know where I'm going now. I've just got to negotiate. Oh, I know, city drivers. No offense to the car in front. So this is the bit I don't like. All the driving up through the country was fine. I mean, nice and progressive, especially first thing on a Sunday morning. Uh, it is now 9.31 and we are, well, literally about two miles away from where my missus is, so not far to go now. Someone has borrowed my sunglasses out of here. And I don't do bright sunshine very well, especially winter sun when it's low. Anyway, right, I'm gonna face you forward again now so you can see where we're going. Because it's more interesting than looking at me. No, I wanna go that lane. I got caught out here before by the sun shown on the road. The bright early morning sun hides all the arrows, the white arrows on the road. That is an excuse, and it is a valid one because it is true. But um, yeah, I say I know where I'm going. Just occasionally, I have to remind myself that no, I don't want that lane. I want that one. So, but we are close now. It's not far. So. Big college on our right hand side here. Headington, I think that's what the sign said. So Oxford obviously a, a city well known for its university and other sites of learning. It's full of colleges and schools and yeah, a young person city perhaps. Not for me anymore. Well, no cities for me. I don't do cities. There you go, Oxford Brooks University at Headington. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna turn that off and leave you guys. And I will see you later, maybe on the journey home or maybe later on when we get back to the farm. All right. Okay, so it's five minutes to 12. My visit with Mrs. P is over. I'm only allowed two hours. So it's a fairly strict regime where we are, which I understand because there are some, some people where we are, I'm not telling you where we are, that um, require a strict regime. So now I've got the journey home. Okay, I don't like leaving her here. I'm looking forward to the day when I'm bringing her home. Unfortunately, today is not that day. So yes, I've been invited to supper with Dave. Remember Dave the Builder? If you don't remember Dave the Builder, because you haven't been here long enough, then you'd have to go back in the library, oh, just over a year ago, about 18 months ago, when we built the granny flat for mother-in-law. So um, yeah, so Mrs. Dave has invited me for tea and then Mr. Dave has invited me for a pint after tea. So, not something I normally do on a Sunday, but do you know what? It's better than being by yourself, isn't it? So, that's what we're gonna do. So, um, anyway, so while we were here, um, we've been out, and Mrs. P and I, we've been to one of the local parks, we've been to a local cafe, so I had my breakfast there. Um, she'd already had hers. <coughs> I walked around the park and then we did actually disappear off 
into Oxford or down in, more into the town to look at, um, to see if we could find the botanical gardens. We kind of did, but I'm not sure if, um, while we were looking at signs for the botanical gardens, if I didn't go into a, um, into a zone where this van is not allowed. I'm, I really hope I'm okay, but I got a horrible feeling that sometime in the next two weeks I'm gonna have a fine comfort of post going, naughty Mr. P, you drove your dirty diesel vehicle in a place you shouldn't have. And the thing is, I can't really go with the excuse, I don't live here, I've never been there before, I was looking for something else. It's a case of signs are there, you, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Just because I was looking for a different sign, that's no excuse for missing one that I should have seen. Didn't see any cameras, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I got away with it. But um, yeah, so we kind of found the area where, where botanical gardens are. It's only about a mile away from the hospital where Julie is. Um, and we're looking at maybe, maybe looking at visiting there in a, in a couple of weeks. And then we went for a drive around and we went past the BMW Mini um, Visitor Centre. And we Googled that. And I think that's something we're going to do later in the year. Um, is go and visit the Mini Centre. Now, I don't know if I could take a camera around that. But it looks to me like it's a big BMW building where you can... It goes through like the history and the manufacturing and everything to do with... Um, well, what was the Morris Mini? So there's photographs of minis on there, Morris Miners, all sorts of stuff. So, and although Judy's not a big car fan, we're looking at things to do while she's in Oxford um, and while I'm coming up to visit. That, you know, while, um, while I come up, I must make something of it, do, do something. You know, we're allowed to come out and spend time together and, and do things. So, yeah, maybe we'll go and look at um, the mini centre. In Oxford, book a tour. I think it's a two-hour tour. So, yeah, I'm quite excited about that. Okay, right. Well, it is like I said, getting on now. It's just about midday. Hopefully, I'm going to be back by about half past one, two o'clock at the latest, and then it'll be feed the animals, bed the animals, do my jobs sit on my ass for an hour. Yeah. I'm not a very big fan of this particular junction here where we're turning right and there's two lanes of traffic turning right and they merge into one. Those of you that live in Oxford will know where I am. Marsh Lane. It's, uh, it's one of those things where it's a little bit dog-eat-dog -dog and it's much nicer if people are polite and respectful than uh, aggressive and forceful. Let's see if everybody can be respectful today. Yeah, not too bad. I've seen it worse. Okay. On our way back, it is 12.38. And do you remember what I said about Bybury, the village of Bybury on the way up? Uh, let's just look at the comparison a couple of hours later. We're just gonna go down the hill into the village now. for some traffic and tourists. So, remember there was one white car here this morning when we came down here? And Bearing in mind, this is there's no bank holiday, no special weekend like that. This is just a normal winter's weekend in Boybury, and it's heaving. Come the summer, mind, it's 
ten times worse than this. Selfie bridge. Quite often you can't get over this because there's people all over the bridge just taking photographs. This is actually a quiet day in Bybury. So, looking over my right shoulder, oh crumbs. Well, the cafe is heaving. That's busting at the seams. That's good enough for me to get out of here. So, okay, Omra's home. Won't be long now. Actually, there was a lot less traffic there than I was expecting. Mind you, it's a pretty miserable day. It's seven degrees out there. It's overcast, it's wet. I'm pretty sure if it was a dry, sunny day, we would have struggled getting through there. So, which is how it usually is on a dry, sunny day. So, right, okay. Like I said, home. Nearly home, about a two miles to go it is just coming up to quarter past one I'll be on by 20 past so it's about the same it's about an hour and 20 minutes so the roads on the way back haven't been too bad um, we're going pretty slow now because we're following Captain Slow um, but yeah it's still I work on an hour and a half each way to give me time to get to where I go so it's, it's three hours of the day in travel to get two hours of visit with uh, Mrs. P. So we're kind of hoping that as her recovery progresses, those two hours are going to extend to three, four hours, um, then to full days. And then we're kind of hoping that within a couple of months, she'd be actually coming home for weekends and stuff like that. So that would be nice. Apart from the Sunday when I got to take her home again, but. Yeah, but uh, the good news is, Mrs. P is on the road to recovery. And like I said before, we may open up and tell you the story of um, the issues she's faced um, and which um, collaterally the family have faced as well. It's been a difficult period, so we say. So uh, I'm not gonna go into it because this is, this is Julie's, um, Julie's thing, not mine. Um, so it's her story to tell when she's ready, if she's ready. I think she will, but um, yeah, you're, you're, if you stay with us long enough, one day you'll probably understand what's going on. So, okay, so we've got some, all right, go faster, go faster, don't make them wait too long. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, right then. Home, we're almost there. Looks like I've got visitors. Abby and Henry, perhaps? Hopefully they come down and let the dogs out. Yeah. That is definitely the Abby Mobile. <laughs> 